so welcome. It's uh, eight o'clock in Van in sunny Vancouver, and today we're going to talk about uh, something that is near and dear to both Dean and my hearts, and and also Natalie online. Natalie um, has basically put her hand up and said, uh, if there's a GML or XML webinar, I want to be there. That's right. And so she's she's uh, coming to the office today, and so so she's there watching the questions come by. And uh, so my name's Don Murray, and I'm Dean Hintz. Yeah. Yeah. And we're really excited today to, to talk to you about uh, um, seven secrets to manipulating GML files. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Doing, doing anything and everything with GML, reading and writing. That's and, right. Yeah, that's right. All that's that right. Stuff. So. That's right. So what are some of the things we're going to look at? Well, first, a little bit about SAFE, just one slide. Um, at SAFE, we focus on moving data. Um, enabling you to focus on the problem you have in front of you and not fighting with data. So we talk about um, you know reducing friction. That's a that's a term uh, my good friend Dale um, came up with many years ago, and it's still very valid. With FME, we're trying to reduce the friction of you moving the data from wherever it is to wherever you need it. And more and more, we're seeing, or lots and lots, we're seeing. Um, GML or XML being a, uh, a a target or a source for data, and people want to move it. And so, whether you're on the desktop, and that's where it all begins. Um, so, if you're new to FME, so um, people out there who have never used FME, it all starts on the desktop. That's the authoring environment, and so everything we're doing here, you develop on the desktop, and then you, if you, and then later you can easily move it to the server. Um, or the cloud, and the cloud really is is simply FME server in the cloud. So, so the nice thing of there, really the takeaway there is start on the desktop, author, and then we have both a desktop and an enterprise and a cloud solution for you. So, so whatever you uh, want to do. And then, and the neat thing is, is it's all integrated, so you really don't need to be doing any kind of coding That's to get right. stuff into server. It's just if it works on desktop, you hit a button. Publish it to server, and it's just going to work, and it just works. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, so with FME and GML, it's been a long road. We've been um, working on XML and GML for many years, and each release it gets easier, and um, and that's good. And as you know, looking at our roadmap, that's just going to continue. So, yeah. so if we did this in, um, you know, like three years from now, there might just be one slide, Dean. Yeah, one, never one slide, maybe. An easy button, and you just hit it, and boom, whatever you wanted, it just happens to know. One transformer. That's right, that's right. So, so um, yeah, so we started this thing called an XML challenge many years ago, and to be honest, when those files first started coming in, Dean and I would start to sweat, you know, because, um, <laughs> but now, um, when they come in, it's, it's, it's a very simple matter to read any GML or any XML, um, and so that's really the first takeaway, is um, we can read any GML. Yeah, and, and, and one of the one of the things there that you know we'll we'll see with things like WaterML is because our GML readers and writers are so powerful, uh, people might not even know we read that format because yeah. they may not know it's a GML format. Absolutely. Go, oh, WaterML. Does Absolutely. FME support it? And they may not show up on the list because the GML reader just reads it. That's right. That's right. So yeah. so yeah. So if you don't see your format there. Um, give FME a try. Just yeah. pick generic GML. If it's GML, it should just work. Also, writing complex GML. Again, now with XSD writing, um, you don't need to learn tools, complex tools like XSLT and and uh, and things like that. And and of course, the big thing with the FME and data, any kind of data, is all about data model transformation. You need to get the data into the model for the destination system, and that's regardless of whether it's GML, XML, or relational. And that's of course where. Um, FME spends a great deal of time, and also we're going to show you how you can use this thing authored on the desktop to actually build um, a WFS in this case. But you could use it to build any web service, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And here are just some of the formats that we do. These are, um, and you can see there's um, some of the big ones out there. You know, um, and German NAS. That's a that's a nasty format, I guess I could say. It's yeah. pretty complicated. Yeah, City GML, you know, and then some some other ones, WaterML, oh, AIXM, yeah. Wixom and Axum. Yeah, all those. Yeah, good and we're ones. gonna see we're gonna see Wixom, aren't we? And we're gonna see yeah. Axum. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, and there's many many more that we just read that uh, that we don't even we don't even think about it. But those are the ones that come to mind. Okay, so here what we're covering today. Is we're going to look at um, first reading complex or any GML. Okay, so if you can read complex, you can certainly read simple. Yeah. So, um, and then we're going to look at well, what if you want to read GML with no schema? 
Ooh, that I mean, sounds scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, is, I think we used to basically say, well, you know, no schema. What, what, no schema. Know, it's, yeah, yeah. How know, do we know that? Luck, that's but, right. Uh, we'll see what happens. That's this right. Time. And of course, GML validation. That's a big one. You need to validate GML, and you'd be surprised yeah. how often the GML we get is actually invalid. So FME is actually a great tool for validating GML. So if you're writing GML in any any using any technique and you want to validate it, that could be syntax or schema. Both, then um, FME is a great tool for that. Um, yeah, and to and from GIS or other database things. So that should say to from GIS database wherever you're going. Um, that's uh, something else. Yeah. yeah, CAD. Yeah, exactly. Good point. CAD to GML or whatever. And um, yeah, and then um, web services. We're going to talk about that. How to read them. How to write them. All that good stuff. And then of course at the end we're going to go over some cool stuff. Some of the stuff that's Sort of in the lab now, and we'll talk about stuff that's coming, and some then we have, and then you stuff. have some, yeah, and yeah. then um, some other cool stuff because you know there's no never an end of cool stuff when it comes yeah. to, to GML. So we so love there's always stuff. something new coming down. Yeah. yeah. So that's um. So that's what we're covering today. I what I liked about this was, uh, it it almost looks like uh, or, you know, the four elements of air and water and land, and fire. I guess Wixom is pretty close to fire because that lightning might start a. Yeah. Firestorm. So anyway, yeah. we'll start to have a look at some examples here. Yeah. So you're going to quickly go through four complex um, formats just to show us how easy it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So starting off with uh, City GML. So this is just a City GML data set. Okay. Uh, it actually comes from uh, IFC or or Revit. Yeah. And uh, so this is the 2D view. Mm -hmm. And then I can flip over to 3D. Yeah. And the neat thing about this, about City GML, it is, you know, it's a format we've supported for a while, but now having integration with BIM formats and then being able to go from City GML, say, to something on yeah. the web like uh, yeah. KML or, yeah. or yeah. Uh, th yeah. 3 So can you just show the people, not that I want you to reopen it, but just go file, just show them how you opened that. You went file and then you... In this just, case, it's City GML, yeah. Yeah, and then you just pick the, fi the file... Yeah. And that was that it. was it. Okay. Now there are, there is room for extensions, for example, yeah. things like yeah. energy, but uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's okay. Just, and then that was it, and then boom. It, yeah. And the other thing to point out here, real quick, is that uh, we we support reading all the complexities of it. So this this object, this building, has multiple geometries. There's a yeah. simple LOD uh, two geometry, and then you can also have the full yep. full rich. Perfect. You can so, see it. You can see everything, and that's so. So right now, Dean's in the data inspector, and that's a real key aspect of the desktop environment as well. And um, as you're working with any format, you want to take a look at what you start with, and then as you're building towards a destination, you can you can you can look at it, see the effect of your workspace you're building, which we'll see in a minute, and, and the then only you thing can I, inspect it. Yeah, and I did want to point out here is that the inspection actually shows you the full richness yeah. of the attribute model and the geometry model. Yeah, so perfect. Really lets you look under the hood. Awesome. So what's the next one you're gonna look at, Dean? Now we gotta go from the land to um, to water. Okay. So we're looking for uh, water ML in this case. Okay. And I and I'm actually reading uh, directly from a URL. Right. Uh, from USGS. So you can see here waterservices.gov. Okay. Okay. So let that spin up. And so FME can read directly from. So what you're also showing is that FME can read directly from. URLs. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, so and that so, yeah. th this is basically uh, hydrology information, yep. say from sample points. Okay. And so if you wanted real-time uh, flood information, this would yeah. be one way to get it. Right. And you could see in the log window at the bottom, you're actually able to see the um, the URL. So there we go. So that's this is coming live. So so what exactly are we looking at? Are we looking at um, this is a monitoring point, and then I could actually look. Is, is it like height of water level? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could look at an actual time series sure, sure. for that location, and it would yeah. show me uh, yeah. this is the, the water level. or the, Actually, sure. this is a flow level, I believe, right. okay. how many okay. cubic feet per, sure. okay. per minute or something. Good. Like so again, any all the attributes, all the geometries, everything there. Perfect. Everything's there. Awesome. Yeah, that so was simple. And fact, you didn't even have to download the file first. You just pointed right at the URL and away you right. went. Yep. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the other thing is we're actually showing the list structure. So again, this is complex uh, uh, GML. Uh, to actually make use of that list structure in a database, you probably would have to maybe explode that out into separate features or something or, yeah. or concatenate okay. it. Okay. But we're giving you full access to that, that yeah. data model.
So moving so, on. To the um, next one. The and next. you just use GML. You use the raw GML there. There was no there was no Wixom format that you no, specified. No, that's yeah. just the GML yeah. reader. And in yeah. fact, and I, that really shows the power of of our reading technology yeah. and that it can figure it out based on what is the data it's getting. So now what are you going to look at? Looking at AXM. So this okay. is uh, Chicago O'Hare Airport AXM. Yep. And uh, just going with the defaults yep. for that. Yep. And again, reads it in. In this case, you are using an AXM. So what we did in this case is we, we, we've used our workspace technology or of to um, basically add a bit more value for you. So the raw GML would still work, but this yeah. does a better job. You know, and if you have a specific format, you think that, because you know, there are a lot of settings in the GML yeah. reader, and so yeah. sometimes what we'd like to do is package that up so that the defaults will, will make sense for yeah. a specific yeah. format. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, if, if, if you think that you have a GML format that you really deserves its own named format, then, yeah, yeah. then, uh, yeah we yeah. can certainly do that. Yeah, yeah. So this looks like a pretty big one. Lots of lots of processing going on here, Dean. Yeah. Well, that's AXM. You know, yeah. it's, there's yeah. lots of because of course there. we have to build all the airspaces as well. Yeah. From so that when we look at it in the data inspector, we actually see we actually see airspaces. So yeah, yeah. So okay. This is. Still thinking. Really? Wow, this is. Amazing. I could. I can come back to it in a second. Yeah, zoom out and zoom in. Is it? Are we? No, it's still. Wow, this is a big one. Big file. Okay. There it goes. So there's the airspaces. Right. Right. So you can and... see it's definitely over Chicago. It's definitely in the right space. Yeah. So those um those those spheres are um, the airspaces defined around the Chicago airport. Yeah. Okay. Now AXM is a 2D format, so I can't. But but we could easily take this right, and render right, it as three right. D for camera sure, or something sure, like that. Sure. So, so if you had an airspace that had um you know like a lower and upper elevation, we could yeah. easily turn that into a three D object. So now then, what do we want? So let's zoom yeah. in on the airport here, Dean. Yeah. Okay. And see what kind of detail we get. So that really does look like uh oh, and it's even in the right spot. Yeah. Look so at the that. Next time and it even lines up with the actual imagery underneath, so which is all good. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, query yeah. on an individual runway. Sure, or, get its name, et cetera. The, yeah, 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 yeah. So good. And again, all the details there. So whatever you wanted from uh, from from the uh, the airport, you could easily. Uh, you and could you easily can see get. that it has multiple name geometries. So yeah. there's an extent geometry, and then there's also um, uh, an actual. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The runway itself, the element name for the geometry. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, is that four or is that three? Oh, we did miss Wixom. We can't miss Wixom. Oh, well, Quick. it's going to be more like the same, isn't it? It's, I think it's, I, I, my prediction is it's going to be as difficult as the other ones. Basically, yeah. as I said, the secrets to success on this are if you've got a schema, yeah. just sometimes in support, we'll, somebody will send us a file and say, can you read this? Yeah. The first thing we're going to ask you is there a schema for it. Yeah. Um, we have to make sure it's actually GML because yeah. sometimes we get files that... Folks think it's GML, but it's actually not GML. And we've seen that many times where maybe they have GML geometries or they were kind of inspired by GML. And then not to be confused with yeah, not to be confused with inspired GML. Yeah, which but, is uh, actually GML. Which is actually GML. Yeah, yeah. And of course, axis order, there's some things like that are not actually specified in the GML file. So if you're reading that long, you, you don't really know. You, you don't really know and there's nothing in the file that tells us whether the coordinates are lat long or la or long lat. And so, but you'll know when you look at it, and then you can, in FME, you can just make a set, uh, switch. But well, yeah. yeah, and in some cases, people get weird data sets where they mix them in the same data Perfect, set. yeah. So that, then, then you get these two points of sure. data on different parts sure. of the plan. And, and really, the last point is, is if you have some GML or you're having trouble working with it, just run it through the validator. It may not even be what you uh, think it is. So the no schema reader. So, okay, so all these ones had schema. So what if I, I have a GML that doesn't have any schema? So Well, that used to make us break out in a cold sweat, as, yep. you, know, as you can yep. see here. Yep. But uh, there is an option now, and okay. that's the, uh, the no schema reader. So we'll okay. have a look at what that looks like okay. coming soon to the store. Now, this is the, uh, the Wixom data, by the way. Okay, perfect. So, so we'll zoom out. if you zoom out, you'll see the data map. If you zoom in or zoom out. Yeah, so. there we go. There, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's weather. That's weather. Okay, not so too exciting, Dean. The next volcano from Iceland sure. or something, yeah. then we'll okay. have that cloud. 
on the horizon. Good. So okay, so back to uh, if I have no schema. So we'll have a look at that. Yeah. So, so I just I have some data here. Yeah. Uh, parcels. Yeah. And I'm just gonna open this with Inspector. Yeah. And I'm gonna choose the uh, the no schema format. Right. Okay. So instead of GML, I can type GML, and you're going to see in my list there's a GML no schema. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it does have parameters. Yeah. Uh, it basically has a list of geometry types that it'll match. Yeah. And it has some element types. But really, if it's, if it's in most cases, you don't even have to go there. Yeah. Yeah. In most mean, cases, it, yeah. it's going to be member or feature member. Yeah. You're just being fancy in case yeah. you get some weird GML, like weird no schema GML. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Which technically we're not talking about, but it's kind of good you threw it in there. Yeah. Because yeah, XML is always hiding around the corner. It so is. It you is, never know when it's, it's going to jump it's, out. It's, at it. Exactly. So exactly. we're trying it's to there, talk about it's GML. There to, but it's, it's there to seduce those working yeah. in GML to the. Just, just to, when you to, think. Just to pull you in. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So, what do we got here? All right. So, we got to zoom in here because okay. it looks like we're off of Africa, but we're not. We're in the uh, Riviera. Okay. So, so oh, okay. sunny and warm, even warmer than Oh, here. wow, look at that. Yeah. And again, the beauty of, um, can you make your window a little bigger? Just yeah. the beauty of background maps is, is, is wonderful because, of course, you can see in context that, that your data actually does line up. And that's like one of the great features of, of um, the data inspectors, too, is making sure that the, the coordinates of your data actually is. Now, the cool thing about this whole approach, Don, is that it's not only do you get all these geometries with mm -hmm. with the center points and all that, yeah. reference points, but you actually get the rich uh, geometry model, yeah. too. Because yeah. what it's done is it's flattened all the, uh, for Actually. every member, it yeah. flattens all of the elements and properties within that. Okay. So, uh, now, you might not need all of these fields, but, but you can expose there. the ones you yeah. need. And in say. most cases, when you're moving data, regardless of the source format, you really pick what you need, right? Yeah. Because, and then in these GML cases, um, the data is very, very rich. So chances are your application, you wouldn't need them at all anyway. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so in, a, in a sense, what this does is there, sometimes we, in support, we get files and say, oh, we can read this in QGIS, and why can't we read it in FME? Well, it's because QGIS is doing exactly that. It's like, it's basically reading it without schema. So if it has schema, does QGIS use it? No, no. Okay, it can't. so it never uses. No, it oh. never uses. So now oh, with FME, goodness. you okay. get both options. Right, yeah. right. Okay. So removing the the fear factor from. Right. So there we go. So schema. uh oh. So that's no problem. And this is coming to the FME store. Um, this, um, yeah, yeah, and we'll work to make it even more integrated. So this so. is just what the workspace looks like. So if you went in and looked inside that no GML schema reader, that's it. And it's it actually, actually not that complicated. It does break my five transformer rule. I'm only allowed to use five transformers. I thought it was ten, Don. Is well, it, is it, it was just 2016. Yeah. So now <laughs> it's five. So anyway, maybe I'll have to make it seven. Yeah. And then this one. But you can see how simple it was anyway. And we won't get into it, but, but, uh, but you can, um, yeah. Yeah. So you'll, just, you'll. The, the point here is that's very easy. All of these, we'll have all these workspaces available, Don, after yeah. the talk. Yeah. So yeah, perfect. You okay. can look at that. Good. This is what it looks like in a workspace. Yeah. So so now the thing. Reader. So now that one box on the left that says all, oh, that's actually that GML reader wrapped up that you looked at in the previous yeah, slide. So so with that for me on the desktop, then you can use the authoring environment to also create brand new formats. That's right. And in fact. Some of the formats in FME, that's exactly what we've done because there's no value in going in hard, you know, using C++ or something else for yeah. just simple things like that. So, perfect. Excellent. Good job. Okay, so. And that's just, again, the next, oh, yeah, secret to success. Perfect. Yeah, so if you have no schema, now you can use the GML no schema or... Ultimately, under the hood, it is using the XML reader. Yeah. yeah. So in that other one, but we're not going to talk about yeah, that. Yeah. Because it's the, the no schema we're, we're reader. Is just that. We're trying to hide XML. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so XML. Yeah, is... and and the, your second bullet though, I can't I can't get around that one. So yeah, sometimes you'll have data. It's also useful if the data is XML and GML, which we bump into. Where somebody right. says it's GML, but of course, the only thing GML is the geometries. We've seen cases like that as well, right? So. The, yeah, actually, this yeah. No, the GML no schema reader in theory should work on any XML that contains yeah. GML. Yeah, yeah. So, so but, there we go. Yeah. And FME does the hard work for you. It detects the GML and flattens the attributes as it's going along. Yeah. And uh, good. Okay. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. So now back to our friend, the XML templater. Yeah, and that and that's actually a picture of Stephanie there. 
Yeah, make that's... it stop. Yeah, I think she said that to us a couple times while we were making this slide deck. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was when... make it stop. I think it was when I went past slide 100. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And she said, "This is scary." So anyway, and she sounds just like that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so this is this is what it used to look like when you were trying to write. Uh, I hope you can read that text. Especially oh, absolutely. The, the, the important text in red there. Don. That's right. So, but that's what it used to look like when you were writing GML. Right. And uh, now we're going to make it a lot easier. Yeah, because we're going to use the X schema information. We have okay. welcomed. I mean, really, if you forget everything else today that we're talking about, I would my one-liner would be we're welcoming GML into the family of. I don't know if we can call it a normal format, but no, no. a well-behaved format. That's right. That's right. So you, now you can match the feature type, the attributes, the actual from, G, attributes. from GML and XML, yeah. just like you would any other format. As opposed to just having and, a text yeah, file, and, right? Yeah, up. that's right. So you no longer need my beloved XML templater. And uh, that, that last bullet was very painful for me, honestly, to yeah. have that down there because I fell in love with the XML templater and, and I still has a secret, a special place in my heart. So anyway, on, on the next slide. So here, here's what, how we're, what we're going to do next. We're going to do a quick example of sure. schema-based writing. Perfect. And uh, those are and the steps we're going to go through. So perfect. let me so just jump Dean's over just gonna, Dean's that. just going to do it. All right. And so what format are we going to write here, Dean? Well, we're going to write to inspire uh, flood risk areas. Okay. I've okay. already got that open. And here. so all we need really is the schema here. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to add the writer. Okay. So there's the... Uh, Okay. The writer. So it's just okay. And I'm importing the feature types. Right. From the XSD. From, from the, so I could list up all the, here's all the possible sure. themes, yeah. but we're just we're gonna write to sure. flood risk areas. Yeah. So that's what we're choosing. Okay, good. Okay. And, and so it's importing import from it. From data set. Yeah, yeah, so import from data set in this case actually means import from the XSD. Yeah. That's so right. I actually don't have to have right. data in there. Okay. And there's the, the theme again. Yeah. yeah. So there's a two-step process because we have to add the writer, and then, and then we actually it. add the, the the scheme itself. Sure. Okay. And I don't want to have write to. We don't have time to do all those. It would be fun. It would be a lot of fun. We could just do that for the rest of the webinar. Yeah. 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 Or, or, let's or not. not. Let's not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So all I want to do is hazard area. Okay. So you're gonna there put just go. hazard area. Perfect. Yeah. And there it goes. And now. Let's just connect that. Let's just connect that and see what happens. Right, right. Now, now, what, do you have validation on here? Is this what's going to happen here? I think I do. Oh, by default, it probably isn't on, actually. Yeah. By default, it's not on. Okay. And so it actually finishes. Right. But if I go to so, open containing and this is, folder, if I actually op open this up, dare I open the XML, you're not going to see any coordinates in there. No, no. Because, right? Because yeah. it's not getting the geometry. Or if I open this up in Data Inspector. Okay. So so really the point here is that, um, you know, Dean, starting, so starting simple, but turn on validation, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so what are you doing now, Dean? So it's just, I'm just showing you that uh, we're, we're not actually reading the geometry yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. So what I'll do is I'll turn on validation. Okay. And there's a little validate sense. output file. Yeah. yeah. And the nice thing is, is you can during the authoring you can turn on the validation, and then you can make that you can turn that off at runtime with a parameter later if you want to, because validation obviously is not free. So okay. So now you're running it with validation on. Okay. So that one's successful. <laughs> uh, the only warning there is a, a warning on the coordinate system. Sure. Uh, sure. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the output. And to prove that it worked, uh, yeah, you can go to the output there. It looks a little bit bigger, which is encouraging. And we'll just open that up with the data inspector, inspector using the GML, the Inspire GML reader. So there. And in fact, we don't even have to specify the theme. It'll just figure it out. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, if it if it takes a minute to open, it's probably working. It's it, when there's an error, you usually find out pretty quickly. Okay, so there we go. So there's our um, there's our data. Yeah. So these yeah. are flood uh, risk zones. Zoom out a bit there. Yeah, that's a good idea. Flood risk zones in the UK. Yeah. And you okay. can see all of the geometry models there. Yeah. The type of hazard and yeah. Yeah. place name and all that. Nope. Yeah. So good. there we go. Um, so the key there is basically setting the geometry name. 
And then you can see what the all of the schema mapping is done in this attribute creator because mm -hmm. effectively we're act using it to do a copy as well. Okay. Uh, so those Great. are those are the mi minimum number of fields that have to be set. So that's right. kind of following that philosophy of starting simple. Yep. There's a lot of optional fields yep. that you could set. I mean, yep. like, if you look at the schema, yeah. it's oh, yeah. it's oh, very yeah. long. Oh, yeah. But yeah. We don't have to. But yeah, yeah, and, and often, um, you know, and that's why the fields are optional because when you're writing GML, there's going to be many pieces of data you just may not have, and so focus on the, the, the minimal first, and then add what you have, and then uh, you're still producing valid, uh, valid GML. So okay, so let's go back to our slides now. Yeah, I think pretty soon here. Yeah, yeah. So. We will have time for some one or two questions. So this is just the steps I'm going through. In terms yeah. of adding the uh, sure, writer, which we've already done. That's right. That's just for folks who get the deck later. Yeah. Great. And that's basically that's, that's how simple the workspace is yeah, uh, yeah, compared that's right. to that's right. you know what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. So yeah. Yeah, so um, you know, basically here FME is dealing with all that complex XML structure. In the old XML templater days, you, we had to worry about that. Now FME worries about that. And uh, the key point you wanted to make really there was was set the geometry name. We saw in that one it had many geometry names, and so FME is not going to be able to guess to figure out which one you want. So specify the the geometries. If you have multiple geometries, FME can do that too. Yeah. Um, and then always validate and uh, pretty print. Yeah, and the pretty yeah. print is helpful because that it makes it human readable. Yeah. 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 It makes it even more pretty than it already is. Yeah. Awesome. So what are we so, going to look at next, Dean? Questions and answers. So okay. do we have any uh, questions out there? Uh, open it up to... Will the inspector support web scene backgrounds in 3D view in future? That is a great question. So when you, we notice when you flip to the uh, the city GML model, the background map went away. And in, in really, we didn't need to do that. Now, that's a, that's a future roadmap thing. Oh, where, when you switch to... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. a great question. Yep. Hi, what background map or base map is being used? Um, you have your, you, you can use, you in that your case you're using MapQuest, I believe. Yeah, with OpenStreetMap. Yeah, but you can, um, if Dean goes into the data inspector very quickly, you can pick a whole bunch of different um, background maps. And in fact, you could also grab your own. So if you had um, any format that FME reads, you can also use that as your background map. So you can see the ones that are there now. Yeah, and, you um, can just choose uh, FME format. Yeah, so that's right. It could be, exactly. could be anything, anything that we support. These images are being loaded underneath, embedded within G, or is it something which, yeah, okay, so it's within the data inspector and Wixim is weather, okay. Now validation. So there's lot, lots of uh, power in FME for validating. Uh, of course, you've got all the traditional transformers, Don, that you can do validation with, uh, yep. all the testers. That's uh, right, that's right, you know. for validating schema. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But the XML validator itself, yeah, will allow you to validate both syntax and schema. Yeah. So and we did see cool. some of that already in the yeah. um, the writer where you turned that on. Yeah. So. so I just want to show you one other, because we've already looked at this once, but I'll just show you one other example of that really quick. Uh, just so that that red error messages don't have to scary. So you can see that this runs and it validates. Now what happens, let's just start willy-nilly here. Let's say if we did delete, uh, I'll delete two things here, and I run that, we're going to see a couple of errors. So you can see that red there, and basically there's two errors that we're, we're seeing. There's base, it's expecting, these are some required fields that are, that it's expecting, and it doesn't allow this multi-surface. Right. So uh, if I go and undo one of my changes and put my this local ID back in, that gets rid of most of the uh, the errors that I have. So mm -hmm. I should only have one error now about the multi-surface. Right. And then when I add that uh, the donut hole extractor back in, that will get rid of the. Uh, see, there's the multi-surface error. So yep. I got rid of the required field error. And now when I run it all the red goes away. Perfect. So so even though that red can look kind of scary because uh, there's it'll repeat itself yeah. uh, for every error feature, yeah. uh, it's it's fairly informative if you look through it. Uh, and generally the idea is you start at the top. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So what if I have a GML file and I just want to validate it? I don't actually want to do reading. I just want to quickly validate it. How can yeah. I do that with a... Oh, well, just see the workspace you see on the screen now. Just a creator and a, and one validator. You can pull in that file. Yeah. And uh, away you go. And 
validated against any schema. That'll work yeah. for any XML, not just GML. Okay. And it will pass, fail, and give you a report right. with the right. XML errors. That's right. Yeah. Good. Okay. So that's validation. Good. And don't forget about those name geometries. Yeah. So again, reading, writing, validating, it's all the same, right? Start simple and understand what's required and then um, yeah, and, and, work your way and max features is your friend, so yeah. set max features to right. five, that's, a small that's number, right. that's a, so yeah. that you don't get a, an error log. And that's as directive 10, in the yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so, so off to WFS. Yeah, so so there's many WFS services out there, more all the time, and um, and reading them can be tricky, and uh, so with FME we make it uh, we make it really really easy to. Uh, so I think you're going to show. Are you going to show reading first, or are we going to go straight to just producing one? Well, I'll show. I'll show the the workspace that produces it, and then okay. we'll, we'll read from it. Perfect. So, um, yeah. I mean, okay. the whole idea of OGC is is great in the sense that, um, uh, you know, you've got the standard to promote data interoperability, but one of the challenges, it's yet another set family of formats that that somebody needs to support. So. What's innovative here about uh, our approach to web services, we're actually using uh, a workspace um, not just to move data from one data set to another, but also to do messaging in the right, form of a service. Right. So it's actually, we're actually implementing the get capabilities, the right. get describe feature type, and the get feature requests so what inside happens, the workspace. That's right. So, okay. so what we do is we publish, uh, we have a workspace that can accept messages and transmit responses, and then when we publish that to the FME server data streaming service, now it can listen yeah. for things like get capabilities, describe feature type, and provide the appropriate response. So in this case, there's a get capabilities request, and then we give a, the capabilities document back. If there's a describe feature yep. type request, we provide the XSD. Back, yeah. Yeah. And a get feature re request, that's when we finally provide the Gmail. Yeah, perfect. So that's perfect. how that works. Yeah, and that's um, using our data streaming service right. on the FME server, yes. So I'll just pop that up okay. on, uh, so you can okay. see what the workspace looks like. Right, right. And you can sort of, when this comes up, you, it's very easy to see the different, the different request types and where you've broken them out in this uh, with this workspace, which is yeah, yeah. That, I'm not going to focus as much no. as it would be fun to go through the whole thing. Absolutely. Uh, basically, I just want to focus on the different request types and how, when you choose a different request, you get a different result. Okay. So, and the other thing that's kind of neat, I'd like to just to highlight here about our, our, um, how we deploy the server. Is that you? You know, one you can preview this whole thing by going run with prompt. Yeah. And these become the options on server, or ultimately these become terms in your URL. That's right. That's right. So if That's I run right. this now with get capabilities, you're going to see that the get capabilities response comes out here. Right. To the text line output. Yeah. And if I do the same thing, but I just go okay, get feature. Yeah. Now it's going to generate GML. Right. Right. Through this port down here. Right, and so you can test this whole thing um, locally on your desktop before you even publish it to server, yeah. and then at the end just move it up to uh, up to server. So that's uh, so that's great. Yeah, and here's the test filter for the different uh, choices. Sure. So that's right. And Good. we've done this for WMS. We could just as easily do this for WCS, yeah. WPS. Yeah. And you did this for SOS as well, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so great. So let's just have a look at how that works uh, online. Okay. So now what you're going to read, you're going to you gonna publish hit, this one. Yeah. And um, and now you're going to hit it from our data inspector. Yeah. I've actually published this to the cloud, to yeah. FME Cloud. Yeah. So, and you can see the URL there. Yeah. So this yeah. is going to that. And that, that you can access. That link is available on yeah. Knowledge Base. Yeah. Or, yeah. or, yeah, it's just in the wild. So if yeah. you see that, you can paste that into your own and... So oh, there you, you can see those are the choices. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do... So that went through, that was the get capabilities response, was it? That yeah. came back there? Yeah. So yeah, when you click on this, that you get the get capabilities response. Yeah. And then when I go click OK, it's going to yeah. do a describe feature type yeah. so that it knows what the structure is. And yeah. then it's going to do a get feature right. all in the background. That's right. And you can see the URL links in the, in the log back there. So if you clicked on one of those, you would effectively be making the call to the... Uh, the server yeah. again. While we're waiting, I'll do that. I'll just click okay. on this Get Capabilities, and then yeah. you can and then see, you'll see it that it's downloaded down. here. And I can uh, go ahead and open that. Yeah. And there's the actual 
get right. to those documents. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Perfect. Okay. So that's that's one response. Yeah. Uh, Good. Sorry, you said that, but okay. And there now you can see. Well, we just got the first thousand features, right. which may or may not be useful. You can see. Yeah, just in uh, all those time. place names. But what's interesting now, uh, which wasn't possible in in a pre some previous implementations of uh, WFS that we had is you can actually do a filter query. Right. So I can now put a filter expression in here yeah. that says, just give me the data for Italy. Right. OK. And, and now so that that'll goes. go through. And, and that's, that's really that's key right. for something like WFS, because WFS is not really a great base mapping tool. No, no, no. We that's don't right. want to funnel you know, all your data through. That's We've right. got to have a focus. So now the workspace in the back end is only retrieving those data, that data yeah. set from the database. And perfect. And the neat thing about having doing using the workspace approach for this, Don, is that you have full flexibility for implementing queries, mm -hmm. uh, any query that you want in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. So that's okay. great. And I, I guess the other thing I kind of flew through there was just the the WF, WFS reading client. So. Yeah. Uh, this allows you to access also version 2.0. Yeah. And uh, yeah. 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 Gives you any kind of and, and as you can see here, it also renders the full complexity of that yeah. Inspire geometry model. Yeah. So yeah. there's some WFSs there that will render the geometry, but you don't get the attribution. Right. So even this funny list structure, which allows for multiple spellings in different languages, that's all supported. Okay. All right. That's great. So yeah, so clearly this morning here we're doing a survey, just showing people what what is possible, um, yeah. and not diving into great detail. So, um, but yeah. but uh, you, you can see again, not overwhelming. Yeah, and the main point here I just wanted to highlight is that all of these elements, all of these parameters, actually end up on a URL. Yeah. Uh, so you're actually configuring the interface to that web service without having to do any coding. You're just configuring yeah. parameters. Perfect. And then they're all available on the FME. Uh, and this is just the, I, I don't have time to no. play around in server, but this is the process of publishing. So you just check data streaming service. You yep. check, OK, the data is going to come in yep. this uh, 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 input, and yep. it's going to go out that output. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and you can preview all this on server before you actually deploy it. Absolutely. Great. So yeah, and that's, there's a whole, there's tutorials online oh, yeah, for this. Yeah. We've already seen the reader. Yep. All right. So the secrets to success there. Yeah. So so we, we, we touched on this briefly. You can test this whole thing on um, that workspace that Dean showed. You can test that all on the desktop to make sure you're getting all those yeah. requests handled before you even uh, before you even publish it to the server. So then when you publish it to the server, you know it's you know it's going to work. So that's uh, so that's great. And the other thing is, you saw uh, in the inspector, all those URLs are clickable. Yeah. And so, it, like, even if you're just using uh, FME as a WFS client to somebody else's WFS, yeah. if you click on that URL and you get back uh, permission denied, for yeah. example, yeah. well, you don't have the right login. Yeah. It's not yeah. the fault of the client; yeah. it's the yeah. fault of the server or yeah. your access. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've had cases where the XSD documents are actually specified in the in the WFS, but the XSD documents themselves are not reachable because they're behind a firewall, for example. Yeah, we we've and seen that's, you know and IP then, addresses in yeah, the yeah ex exactly yeah. so so and. And that's and that's a problem with the WFS server. There's nothing the client can do to uh, yeah to fix to fix that. But but the log really helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah. Okay. So, yeah good. So now going from to and to and from GIS, I'll just run through this quickly. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, the challenge here is that uh, XML is high, can be highly nested, and how do you map that to relational? That's right. And uh, so this is just a couple of quick examples here. I don't think I need to open them up, but. Nope. Basically, we provide lots of schema mapping tools. Ultimately, when you're going between uh, GML and uh, GIS, it's often uh, the main challenge is schema mapping. Absolutely. And uh, so we've kind of removed the, the challenge of having to be an XML expert, but you do need to know your data. Absolutely. Because, you, because um, yeah, if you have those, you know, you have nested objects, really, when you're going to relational, that's a, often another table, so rows in another table, and then you have to, to set up the links between them. And FME, um, and FME helps you uh, you with all that. Yeah, so this is a, a French cadastre data set going to Inspire. And so obviously, you'd have to know that IDU is the unique identifier for that parcel. And that yeah. maps to Inspire.identifier local. Yeah. So, you know, that 
building up that lookup table. Uh, you can do that in Attribute Copier. We also have powerful transformers. Uh, there's Attribute Value Mapper mm -hmm, and even mm -hmm. Schema Mapper if you've got a, a large uh, data dictionary that you want to map all at once. Perfect. And this is kind of going the other way. So going from a database out to AXM. Yep. And uh, so basically, yeah, just consuming uh, data off, uh, you know, from from Post, just extracting that uh, uh, to AXM. Uh, so that basically you could have a, an AXM WFS on that would, yeah, that would yeah. be served up off of Postgres. Yeah, and, and again, not a lot of um, transformers there. And I'm just looking at this workspace and knowing what's coming down the pipe in FME 2016, I can see four of those transformers just with a quick scan are going to become one. So, really? Yeah, like you got a bunch of attribute creators there, and um, you could do all that in like the, with the attribute manager that's coming. So it's oh, just going to make wow. that much. So, so, and again, not an overwhelming workspace. I, you know, um, for what's going on there, post just to AIXM, which again, AIXM is not the world's simplest data model. So good. yeah, great. And that's just what some of the output looks like if into say a more. Um, Client-friendly format into KML. So, we, so let's see here. So you um, went post just to AIXM, and then you went AIXM to KML. Just so you could look at the Google. Yeah, yeah. Slick and preserve the. And you can see all the attribution model. there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, as best you can, trying to in a relational model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So the secret to success there. Uh, well, one of the key things is that, given the new application schema-based GML writer. Now that we expose all those attributes clearly, you don't have to do schema mapping inside, let's say, a template, which would have yeah. been pretty tricky. Before. It was tricky. So yeah. now that now we've we just give you the tools. You can do uh, all your feature type mapping, your yeah. attribute mapping, just like with any other format. That's right. And uh, so yeah, really, it's all about knowing your data model. Yeah, yeah. And and the schema mapping really is is you know one of the things FME is all about. And so yeah. we have great tools, and they're continuing to improve all the time. And, and in conjunction with this, it's worth underlining or reminding everybody about our validation in yeah. the context of schema mapping, because we yeah. have all this cool new null support. Yeah. So if you have a field that's null, it's not supposed to be, you can replace it, or you yeah. can fail on the translation, whatever you want to do. That's yes, fantastic. So what about some cool new stuff, Don? You want to? Yeah. So um, so we out? thought, at, you know, at the end here, we would talk about some of the things that are coming. And so Dean's going to, so it looks things we're looking at, um, the green building XML, and I think um, you have a demo there. Um, also 3JS, three, three JS, yeah. three JS no and there. CZML, which is, CZML is a cesium format. Is that like radioactive? It could be, yeah. I don't, yeah. It, certainly when you see it, it's hot, I yeah. know that, it looks really <laughs> hot. So I'm not sure if it's radioactive hot or just hot, but it's yeah. uh it's hot. And um, of course, we're not going to show it today, but coming soon is a new tree view. And what that is all about is making it even easier to map, to copy. In that the, whole nested yeah, structure. Yeah, map attributes yeah. from relational and not. So, so I guess. I, the, I didn't think it could get any easier. Don't well, I know, but uh, it just keeps getting easier. I know. We think it's, I they couldn't think, I, when I had the XML template, or I didn't think it could get any easier. So there you go. <laughs> so yeah, so the thought, the, really the overreaching thing is more formats are coming. Um, to hold on to your hats, and it's only going to get easier. So, with that, so what, are just, we, what are you showing me here? I'll just open up the workspace here. Uh, okay. So let's go over to. Um, so this is stuff. this is a GML webinar, Dean, and this is um, Green Building XML. So explain yeah, that. what's so going was, on here? Was this one inspired by GML or something, or is it GML like? Is that how you snuck this one in? Yeah, well, I guess I snuck this one in because it is. Um, it is GML-like, so right. it has all these coordinates, but okay. instead of a pause list, sure, it's um, a coordinate list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay, so that that's it's beautiful, like in in a text editor. So, yeah. are we able to see it in the data inspector by any chance? Sure. Okay. So I'll just open up the workspace and just very briefly, I just want to explain what what the workspace is doing. If you do run into that yep. scary. Yeah. Uh, XML that tries to disguise itself as GML. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what can you do? Yeah. And it, there's there's usually more than one way to do this, but here's a basic approach I'll describe very briefly. Okay. Uh, essentially, you got to find what elements. What's the repeating element that you want to match on? Right. So that's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing you need to do is you need to flatten. Yeah. Uh, those attributes out. Yeah. And in this case, I get a list. Because the building's composed of many walls and, and surfaces, 
uh, I end up getting list structures that I have sure. to expo expose. Okay. So I basically explode out the spaces. Yeah. And then ultimately expo explode sure. out the polygons until okay. I have uh, individual pieces, uh, coordinates. Right. Okay. And then I keep track of my indices along the, that line. So yep. all the way down at the at the unit at the vertex level, I now create points. Right. And then because I've kept my indices, I'm able to assemble those points back into surfaces, into lines, and then polygons, and ultimately back into surfaces. Okay. This looks like a great thing that we could make into a custom format for folks. Yeah, that would yeah. probably be a good idea. Okay. So you're going to run this. So let's have a look and take a look at what this looks like, because I'm a little bit skeptical, to be honest. <laughs> Will this actually all work? Yeah, it does yeah. sound. It sounds a little bit scary because you're kind of everything's exploding into little yeah. bits. So we'll see. Yeah. And you can yeah. see the number of features coming in. Yeah, you can see. And yeah. how many vertices there are. So there's quite a few yeah. points yeah. there. And those rolling feature types, those are so useful because it really, even watching that, you can get a better understanding of data because you can see, you know, the extent of explosion going on within yeah. your data, and uh, and then you can see them coming back together again. Okay. Yeah. So then eventually it'll just uh, pop up the visualizer, will it? I think I forgot to turn the visualizer on. Okay. But uh, yeah, here I'll, re I'll rerun that. Okay. Just because. And while that's running, what's up? What else is. Yeah, while it's running, yeah, we may as well keep moving here because I'll come right back to that. Yeah. So the other one I wanted to show um, two things. One, really quickly, I just wanted to mention that. This cool new transformer called the GML Feature Composer. Right. Now, why would you want to compose GML in the middle of a workspace, Don? Uh, maybe it's a massive file. Maybe it's a uh, some sort of transactional. Yeah. Some transactional exactly. GML. Yeah. So this format, for example, AAA NAS. Yep. It's not strictly speaking GML because actually it it can have updates, inserts. Right. Right. And so. Those are contained within the document. Yeah, so yeah you can yeah. have this transactional document. Yeah, uh, we've seen that where people are using they have the whole workflow, but they need to produce these these, these wrappers are almost like GML embedded within yeah. something in the GML feature composers. And the other thing where that you might use this is if you actually had a, a data streaming service and you want GML snippets to come back and sure. forth. Yeah. Okay. So that's how okay. that works. Okay. And okay. we'll look at 3JS in a second. I just wanted to show you uh, Data Inspector because it did pop up. Okay. So here's our um, uh, green Three. building okay. XML. And you can see there's the 2D view. And I'll flip into the 3D view. And, uh, and there it is. There it is, yeah. yeah. And, you, and of course, the inspector works in 3D mode as well. Yeah, and you see each of these uh, spaces, you have all of the IDs. Yeah. And attributes associated with that space. That's right. That's right. So good. And even down to what surface type it is. So there's a yeah. ceiling, a floor, etc. Yeah. So we've got yeah. So there's basically I, I think I had some support requests to handle green building XML, and we've just done that yeah. in a workspace. And then again, to make it easier for everybody moving forward, we'll make that a custom format, make it available, and then anybody who has um, green building. GML or green building XML, yeah, will be able to read it. Good. If they want okay. to make their their buildings more energy efficient. Okay. Okay. So now last, we're down to the last five minutes. Well, I've you. only got. I think I've only got one more demo done. We are doing great, Dean. That's crazy. I know. I know. We'll have to go it's back. Better. We'll have to go back and yeah, exactly. Each this is awesome. All right. So what's going to happen here is uh, when I click on this guy, right, it pops up. A big blank scary screen, but what this is is actually uh, City GML converted to 3.js, which is a browser yeah, efficient. Yeah, it's a browser. Efficient. <laughs> well, what it what it does is it uses the uh, the graphics card to, That's right. to render. Yeah, yeah. So what's going on? We're just waiting for it. You don't mind? So you can see that mind. that it uh, it does all work, and I okay. can zoom in and out. Okay. So some of the secrets to success, um, the XML reader writer are useful when, uh, yeah, so so in, in some cases you use the XML reader writer because we sort of spilled over from the safety of GML into yeah. the more expansive world of XML, I guess you could say. Yeah, and uh, one way I sometimes describe it is that uh, GML, you could say, is sort of a nice flat world that yeah. has boundaries. Yeah. Occasionally you fall off into the, the world of GML and 
XML. Okay. Yeah. And, and the big thing to remember is XML can handle both. Um, FME can handle all that stuff. Yeah. So, so it's all good there. So, no, that's great. And um, yeah, so the key takeaways from the webinar are, you know, um, if you're reading or working with with uh, any GML, complex, simple, even 3D, yeah. um, FME makes it really easy for you to leverage the uh, those the, the 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 XML GML data exchange formats. Um, also, consuming web services, and we saw that with WFS, but we also saw that with the uh, the, the the Wixom, where in fact you were not reading a Wixom file, but you were actually hitting a web serve, a very simple web service, but one that returned you the data there. So yeah. that's a, and the workspace, of course, didn't know whether it was a file or it just, FME just did that for you. Writing complex GML is also very simple now with the XSD based approach. And um, it comes down to, with FME, it always comes down to, you know, when you're moving data from one system to another, it comes down to data model. And, uh, and uh, FME is really strong at that too. So. And last but not least was you showed how to build a WFS with FME um, using workspaces, but you've also done that with uh, WMS and SOS. And yeah. you could do anything. WPS, really. yeah. you yeah. name it. So yeah, that's right. So basically being able to deploy, once you can actually generate the complex uh, GML, you can now uh, deploy that as a web service. Uh, it, it could be an OGC service. It could also just be a REST service. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So yeah. So in this webinar, our goal has been just to pique your interest. Um, you know, give you an idea of what can be done for sure. Um, you know, we covered a great range of topics. So if you want to dig in more, feel free to contact us. We also have resources online, um, and uh, if you want to find those yourself, you're welcome to. But we encourage you to get in touch with us, and then we'll we'll help you. And uh, we love to learn too, because GML and XML and everything that we do at Safe is a journey, and we like to really. Uh, Help you uh, succeed with all your uh, your data challenges. So yeah, yeah, there are. I think there was a link to two cl classes that, that we offered at the last UC yeah. on yeah. complex GML writing yeah. and on OGC yeah. services. So yeah. Yeah. do follow up with yeah. those. So we're going to do questions. We're going to stay online. Dean and I will we'll answer some questions. It's exactly nine o'clock, so we finished right on time. So do we have any quick questions? Uh, yeah, let's have a look here. I believe MapQuest data is in WSA. Okay, so that was, um, so if so, my data is not in WSA. How is it going to overlay? Yeah, so if your data is not, so the question is, my data is not in WGS84. When I view it, how do I, um, the data, you probably yeah, have to re reproject the, it. The data inspector automatically does that to map line up. Oh, it so, does, actually. Yeah, so yeah. If, if the data. If, if it knows the coordinate system. You may not have right. to tag it if it doesn't. Yeah, if it doesn't, then it's yeah. not good. It's, it's not going to uh, show a uh, background map. So if you bring up data, it doesn't have a background map. That means there's no coordinate system. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's a good one there. Okay. Can FME export 3D geometry files for use in 3D apps? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what we did here. This this uh, 3JS demo uh, read from uh, well, this actually took the yeah city GML file yeah. and converted it over to 3JS. Yeah. So yeah. And uh, what I actually I didn't get to show was just this one. This this is a two transformer workspace. So all it does is read read the city GML, and there's that one line templator in JSON to write yeah, it. Yeah, so there's an example of yeah, going from yeah, 3D. Yeah, yeah. And the bigger answer is FME supports a lot of different 3D formats. Yeah. So so the question really is what uh, what 3D format do you want that for, for your app? And then let us know, and um, or you can look on in FME. You can see them all, and uh, and but yes, the answer is yes. Um, okay. Yeah, and I think a lot of apps are based on some kind of JSON. Yeah. Will you share the URL for the slides in the demo? Absolutely. Okay. Um, for your, this is a great question. The question is, have you implemented WFS 2.0.0 already, or only up to 1.1.0? No, we've done two. Yeah, now. and again, the beauty of the workspace approach is you could actually support many versions of WFS within the same workspace because one of the parameters on that is actually asking for the version. Right. And so, so, so yeah. all supporting 2.0, all it's a matter of doing is checking for version equals 2.0 yeah. and returning the right document, get that's capabilities right. document for exactly. that version. Yeah. Because really, that's all that's changing is the get capabilities document. Yeah. And I think there may be some slight, slight changes in terms of the, uh, the the spatial data set container. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all easily configurable. Yeah. So. Um, good question, though. It's a great question. 
Okay. Okay. So one person's off. To, it's midnight. So thanks to uh, to Corey for staying and, li and listening to this. He's off to bed now. So um, is there an SDK? Yeah, we'd want to follow up with you. There is. Um, we do have something called FME objects, but in general, we would want to understand your flow. If you're it depend on what you're doing. Um, so. Because most people find that while there is an SDK, you can work uh, at FME and trigger it from things like Python, TCL. You can easily call out to an FME workspace, and then you you have the best of both worlds. You're able to call trigger an FME workflow from within your application, but still use the power of uh, FME. Okay. Somebody's asking about FBX. FBX. Somebody asked about FBX. Yeah. Yeah. FBX is planned for 20 FME 2016. So um, and the work on that is um, about to kick off very quickly, very soon, like cool. maybe today even. Wow. So uh, just because they requested it, it's gonna. Absolutely. Happen. That's the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So so we're very excited about um, those formats like FBX. We did Minecraft, of course, which is like a 3D immersive world. Um, format and now we're seeing other ones like FBX, um, Unity, Unreal, and um, but FBX is a, a very exciting one that uh, is planned for for FME. Somebody's yeah. asking about a JavaScript uh, API or Python API. So can, what can we do to support JavaScript and Python, Don? JavaScript is um, so. So if you're talking about a JavaScript API for FME server, there are there is a JavaScript you can. Um, library you can download that puts a JavaScript API on top of FME server. We do within FME have a JavaScript caller so you can invoke some JavaScript. In, to be honest its capabilities are, are limited right now. But, but the we Python have, is... But is Python's full-fledged yeah, Python and you can pull, there. Yeah, and a, pull in any Python library and the Python libraries out there is, as anybody who works with Python knows is amazingly powerful. And all those are available within FME. We have a work, uh, transformer called the Python Caller, and you can do whatever you want. Or you start yeah. up or shut down screen. And again, some of the some of the new transformers we're doing in FME are in fact done in Python, because again, leveraging these libraries, um, they're not performance critical, mm -hmm. um, and so we're able to leverage those. Do a really nice job. And leveraging the great work that the folks working at the open source community of Python's done, and just yeah, so yeah, good. So anything else you see there? Uh, just I'm not sure what our, our, our ARL ARL support. Yeah, so an FBX the guy wants to um, export to a game. So yeah, so we're seeing that just like Minecraft is a game, we're seeing yeah. um, the power of those gaming engines with this data is is crazy good. So yeah. Okay, so yeah, and then lots of um, questions. Errol support, I haven't heard of that one, but uh, we can take a look. And yeah, you can always send us sample yeah. data if there's a format, yeah. particularly yeah. as we're talking about GML and XML. If there is a GML profile or format that you uh, would like us to support that are you having trouble reading or writing, I, I, I would say, Don, the challenge is still out. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, just... We're always and, and at Safe we really get excited about data. So, so um, we really encourage you to reach out to us if you have any data challenges because that's what really gets us excited at Safe is the data. And um, we have a big um, contingent of folks here who are always making it easier to work with data, add new data sources. We don't in any sense think that we're done. Mm -hmm. um, because the world of data, frankly, is just getting more and more exciting, not less exciting. Um, and also, while we're talking about data, we also have a big work uh, going on in enabling us to, you know, embrace web services as well. That's not the topic of this webinar, but but we're, we're working hard on an OAuth framework so we can easily consume any web service. Because at the end of the day, a web service too is data. You send it something, you get something back. And um, and so we're really, as you know, we're all very excited about using this platform to integrate data with the with just the massive amounts of web services that are out there so that's uh, so that's pretty exciting as well so yeah 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 so yeah and it's the whole real time aspect as well so you know XML and uh, you could say you know JSON and XML are sort of the language of the web and so if you want to be able to consume uh, web services yeah. in real time and process them uh, you can even do things like stand up a new web service, so you could have uh, 
a workspace that reads to, from two or three different uh, OGC services or REST services and then builds its own services that it provides as a value added. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there's really the it's really just limited by your imagination. Yeah. You want to build. Yeah. So. So um, yeah, so I don't see so yeah so 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 try it out if you want to try FME. We have a very uh, you have never used it before. We encourage you to, to contact us. We'll give you a you know a free evaluation. You want to you try some stuff. We're we're here to help. We talk about the restaurant model a lot at Safe, and that's working to have both good software and great service, just like you would in any restaurant that you would go to. You know, to have a good experience, it has you have to have good food, i.e. product, and you have to have also good good service and it's safe we we strive to to do both so yeah and um, so there you go yeah so well thanks so much Dean you thanks, did the Don. heavy lifting on this and so I really uh, appreciate that and it's always fun fun uh, traveling on the road with you and also doing these webinars and yeah and thanks to Natalie um, out there for for looking after all the questions that were asked and of course Stephanie where would we be without Stephanie yeah. Um, our slides are, are a work of art and they're fun to uh, to talk against. So yeah. thanks for that. So yeah. yeah, and thanks for all of you who um, joined us on the webinar this morning, or t or at night, or middle of the morning, or middle of the day, whenever it is. We really appreciate you um, tuning in. And please let us know um, what you would like to, to see from Safe and webinars moving forward. Um, would you like to see a deep dive on this? Would you like to see something on web services? Would you like to see something on 3D? I mean, the the challenge with FME is we cover so many different areas, so it would be great to get uh, feedback from you to know what excites you as far as future webinars. And all the old webinars are online as well. Yeah, so don't forget about the knowledge base. So there you go, knowledge.safe.com. Yeah. And uh, we're... we're we have an Inspire tutorial, for example, which has yeah. got a lot on, yeah. on reading and writing GML, yeah. but there's going to be a new one on right. XML GML right. On, right. at a broader base. Right. So let's just say that I, I, uh, I knew a friend who wanted to web see this webinar, but they missed it. How are they going to get to see this webinar in a recorded form? Well, we'll do a mail out, but I think if you just go to go to safe.com slash webinars, yeah. you're gonna see the whole list. That's of right. You'll see future ones. webinars yeah. and you'll also see um you'll also see uh, all the recorded ones. And they're nicely chopped up so you can go directly to specific points in the webinars. Well. Right, exactly. So, okay, well I think with that we'll um we'll sign off and uh, so thanks yeah. so much. Dean. Thanks everybody for your time.